Hello and welcome on board Rock Paper Shotgun. I am your captain, Matthew Castle, and I regret to inform you that this is my first time in a flight simulator. So I hope none of you are holding scalding hot drinks. Now, maybe it's because this is my maiden flight, but I've spent the last week exploring Microsoft Flight Simulator before its August the 16th release, having my mind endlessly blown by what developers Asobo Studios have built here. Considering that the last game of theirs I played was Rat Simulator, a plague tale, this new software has really scaled up, zooming out from the forests of rural Bordeaux to all of Bordeaux, and then the rest of the world beyond it. Yes, they are playing God, and God are they good at it. So let's look at all the ways Microsoft Flight Simulator took my breath away. In case of boredom, your emergency exits are here, here and here, and please hit the like and subscribe buttons before adjusting the oxygen mask of any other passengers. Now, come fly with me. When you ask the development team the first place anyone should fly in Flight Simulator, they make like Kenneth Branagh in Dunkirk. Home. Yes, you should go home, and yes, you can see your house from here. This here is the house I grew up in, and this is me seconds before crashing into the house I'm currently living in. Given that the game draws its landscape from aerial photography, I'm kind of surprised it didn't interpret the massive weed in my back garden as a tree. One day, my pretty, one day. The fact that Flight Simulator is able to show us childhood homes or other cherished locations is down to a combination of aerial data from Bing Maps, magicked into a virtual globe with help from cloud processing from Microsoft's Azure Tech. Considering Bing Maps has two petabytes of aerial data, and to put that in context, that's half a million of these promotional EA flash drives, the cloud tech is also used to stream in local specifics while you're playing play offline and the level of detail will be paired back to roads, coastlines, trees, enough landmarks to pilot by visual flight rules, but not the same magic as seeing a procedurally generated model of the school field where you broke your arm playing rounders. Or was that just me? Most of what you'll see in Flight Simulator are what they call augmented aerials, which are landscapes calculated rather than built from photogrammetric measurements. You'll see in a second the gulf between the two approaches, but these are still an artistic triumph. You see, the game sucks details from those images to give roofs the right colour and even match broad architectural styles so that you can clearly tell the tall Parisian buildings from the sea of terracotta of Dubrovnik's Old Town slash King's Landing, and both of these cities were, in effect, built by a computer. Okay, leaving it to an algorithm does offer up some loopiness. Weirder structures like gas holders are turned into baffling street art, not helped by being next to an incredible hand-modelled Millennium Dome in this case. And when you get up close, you'll spot mad houses that appear to stretch for miles or fold in on themselves like the morphing architecture of Inception. But considering it's mostly a computer doing an impression of the entire Earth, it holds up remarkably well. And the really crazy thing is that it's a world that can keep up with the real thing. As Asobo are able to internally rebuild the world, that means redetecting trees, houses, etc., in just a couple of weeks, and then update the whole simulation if they wish. Over 50,000 cities are rendered using augmented aerials, but as mentioned, there are also cities based on precise photogrammetry, allowing for far greater accuracy and texture. There are over 400 of these cities in Flight Simulator, and you know them when you see them, as they are real showstoppers. We've all seen New York filmed from the air about a million times, but once you see that iconic skyline ahead of you, you do find yourself spending hours doing flybys and tinkering with the camera to frame your own cinematic masterpiece. 
but get up close in a low-flying Cessna, for example, and you see just how accurate it is, right down to branding on the buildings, like this tiny H&M logo, or glimpses of Lion King on the Times Square billboards. Sadly, Times Square's iconic naked cowboy does not make the cut. While the game does include road traffic, it draws the line at simulating people. For me, it's these cities that feel of the next generation, something I've never seen before. Flying down the Las Vegas Strip and seeing all the individual hotel designs and adverts for Cirque du Soleil is pretty insane. If I was feeling braver, I'd have done it in a bigger plane to recreate the end of Con Air. There are a hundred little tricks bringing these cities to life, the way skyscrapers accurately cast shadows onto one another, or the deep shadowy crevices that lie in the canyons between these huge buildings. One recent development is giving a sense of 3D depth to these towering architectural brutes. There's a sense of rooms inside buildings like the Shard. It's a pretty mad detail considering the closest most of us will get will be several thousand feet. And best of all, there are more to come. We're told that many cities possess their own photogrammetry data, so more of these photorealistic sprawls will be added to the game over time. Whether you're flying over photogrammetry or not, nighttime is the great leveller. The team wanted to punch up nocturnal flights, not just to beautify the game, or though these are arguably some of the most photorealistic sights in the whole thing, but to better support night visual flight rules, which allows pilots to navigate by sight, not just instruments. This means light scattering in the atmosphere, such as Las Vegas, basically a million watt light bulb in city form, practically turning night into day. But it extends to individual bulbs in the world with a big focus on accurate colour temperature. The obnoxious glare of a sports field is very different to the spooky murk of an empty parking lot or the warmer lights of residential areas. And yes, skyscrapers also have improved window lights and are topped with the all-important red light to avoid horrendous near misses. I love how practical features that will speak to simmers also double up as nice eye candy for more casual dabblers like me. Speaking of nice things for the easily impressed, look at that water! Again, Asobo's technical leaps and bounds are motivated by wanting to give pilots visual information. Shorelines are more accurate to aid navigation and ensure that you nail the correct moment to start sobbing patriotically as you glide over the white cliffs of Dover, although they're currently a bit more like the green cliffs of Dover, Bing does have its limitations. Likewise, wind impacts wave size, which can inform eagle-eyed pilots of choppy conditions, or it can just let an idiot like me have fun playing as Poseidon by using the wind sliders. More on this weather magic in a second. But for simple sky gawkers like me, it's really the way the engine captures watercolour that most impresses. Not just reflecting and reacting to the sky, giving Britain's beaches their iconic shade of yuck for example, but capturing the silty browns of churning rivers or the almost neon blues and greens of the Bahamas. Asobo also admitted to flattening lakes, which sounds like the work of a mad god, but actually means you can land on any lake on Earth using the amphibious Icon A5. Here's me plonking down on Loch Ness, for example. And no, they did not simulate the monster. As essential as the Azure streaming is to Flight Simulator, I'm more interested in cloud technology of a fluffier kind. Clouds here are fully three-dimensional creations. Light scatters through them as it should, and there's a real sense of changing density as you suddenly punch through the other side and see the colour of the world bleed back into sight. At moments like this, I wonder if this might be the best looking game I've ever played. And they're not all just benign marshmallows. You can hit rain clouds, which gives flight simulator's windscreens a chance to shine as water droplets accurately snake across the glass. And there are thundering great storms that are hellish to be trapped in, but good fun to observe from afar. Such is the physical accuracy of the weather systems that you'll even get rainbows forming where they naturally should, which is pretty magical. You can even cook up double rainbows for fans of ancient memes. <laughs> it's so beautiful! 
<laughs> and if the world isn't serving you up a skybox to your liking, you can just manually edit the clouds by raising and lowering individual layers, letting you force those ludicrously pretty moments where clouds shadow each other. I feel like Ed Harris directing The Truman Show, but for the whole planet, it's kind of unreal. In fact, when it comes to control, Flight Simulator doubles as a pretty good Zeus simulator too. All elements can be tweaked in real time, with the weather widget letting you set time of day or whiz the bar left or right for your own time-lapse show. Even the stars in the sky are accurately mapped to the date that you're looking at. Selecting weather presets gives you a decent flavour of them all, but then you can go deeper and adjust your perfect conditions. I think you could probably just boot up Flight Simulator as a weather sandbox and have a pretty good time, giving your house the white Christmas it never normally gets, or thrashing some forests with a mighty gale. It's something you can find yourself tinkering with for hours as you create perfect sunsets to take photos of or land in some serene valley, set the mood and just watch the world go by. When the game gets VR support in a later update this year, I think there's a good chance I'll step into this world and never return. And if you want a more realistic flight, you can opt for life conditions. They come fitted as standard, with Flight Simulator using real-time weather data from Meteo Blue to ensure that the skies mimic those above us. Again, it's the perfect feature spread to accommodate everyone from hardcore simmers to cloud-watching romantics. And perhaps the biggest surprise of them all, I was actually able to play this. I think there's a lot of people out there who've bounced off these games and never returned. I don't think I could even take off when I tried Flight Simulator 95 as a child. Perhaps it's the console influence of this Flight Simulator eventually coming to Xbox, but Asobo have made a very accessible game. There's a great suite of tutorials that introduce enough of the basics for you to start touring the world in 10 minutes, and if you aren't kitted out with the yoke peripherals and rudder pedals, you can easily steer a plane with an Xbox controller. That isn't to say the simmers are getting a bad deal, there's a sea of buttons in every cockpit that I'm too terrified to touch, just in case they make the wings fall off. And the meat of Asobo's recent introductory presentation on the game focused on vastly improved aerodynamics. As a self-confessed newbie, a lot of this stuff went straight over my head, I mean, quite literally. But that I am sitting here telling you now that this is one of the best gaming experiences I've had in a few years, hopefully speaks to the amazing job Asobo have done. Given that this will hit Xbox Game Pass for PC on August the 16th, means there's really no excuse for subscribers not to give it a go. I think you'll be as dazzled as I am. Obviously, there's a lot more to be explored in Flight Simulator, stuff that I'm still figuring out as I muddle through. I wanted this video to explain the things that blew my mind and made me want to dig deeper into it, because that first hook is everything. So let me know in the comments what features you'd like to know more about, or if there's anywhere on Earth you'd like me to film for the next video, and I'll be sure to do it. I really hope you enjoyed flying with RPS Airlines today. Apologies for the lurches as we try to line up nice shots. And I hope you'll fly with us again. Just hit the big subscribe button in the middle and a member of our cabin crew will deliver new videos to you throughout the week. Thank you for travelling with us and we hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>